Welcome to the Virtual Zoo, the channel that brings the zoo right to you. The day is bright and the sun scorches down on the Grand Canyon state of Arizona with all its might. Last you heard from me, I gave you a brief intro and review of today's adventure. So if you haven't watched that already, then you should seriously consider clicking on that card above. Anyways, welcome to our first tour through the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum, what I now consider to be the most natural zoo in America. As promised, We'll be going in order, meaning that first up is the Mountain Woodland, a region portrayed by the museum as islands of dense vegetation rising up from the empty desert. These foothills and lower mountain slopes are wooded with oaks and pines, thus supporting a vast array of plant and animal species that would otherwise not survive in the desert. Though I'm not exactly sure when it opened, my sources say that most of what you're gonna see today was revealed to the public in 1986, and it kinda shows its age, but you'll see more of what I mean by that later. While it is brief in many aspects, I do consider this to be one of the more popular sections of the museum, and will meet multiple species along the way. With that, let's get going. Your journey through the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum kicks off just past the gate and the entry plaza. From here, we'll take a right and follow a gravel trail, immersing ourselves in the desert as we go. Even despite the sun searing down in our backs, we can eventually make our way past a small section known as Ancient Arizona, featuring the area's prehistoric fossil record, but that's not why we're here. As soon as you start to notice the vegetation getting denser, that's a good sign you're nearing these mountainous woods. Our first stop past this sign is a rocky outcrop, a view through glass into an exhibit we'll see shortly. I'll save that for later, but continuing down the path, we are now surrounded by brush on both sides. Built into the rock is a wire-fronted aviary that first contained thick-billed parrots and then briefly exhibited a porcupine. And nowadays, you'd expect it to have something? Well, now it sits empty, something we'll talk about later, but a stark reminder of the museum's decline. Around here, there's also an interesting sign that once again mentions these mountain islands and where they can be found in Arizona. But this is also where we happen to hear the who's of and were later directed by a staff member to view this wild great horned owl perched up in a nearby tree. But directly across from that tree is this rocky hillside that we briefly saw through the rocks earlier. At around 2,000 square feet, this man-made cliff is dotted with rocks and vegetation, well suited for the mountain lion the museum's mascot and a stealthy predator, sometimes referred to as a Kruger, Puma, Panther, or even a Catamount. These guys range from as far north as Canada's Yukon Territory, all the way to the Southern Andes in South America, meaning that they are well at home in the forested and rocky environments of Arizona, where they find ample cover and abundant prey. Their vast distribution and excellent habitat adaptability is in part why they are a cat of many names, holding the Guinness World Record for the most names of any species with over 40 in English alone. At the museum, you can not only view them from here out over this expanse, but also at the glass near the back of the exhibit that we saw earlier. However, due to their elusive nature, they are somewhat hard to come by in the wild, but we will be seeing many more of them in American zoos. Moving on to the right is another grotto, not the most natural we've seen, but a rocky home nonetheless, for the black bear, 
one of the smaller bear species overall, but well adapted to the wooded regions of North America, as they are excellent climbers and foragers. If you haven't noticed already, aside from these lizards, I didn't actually see anything in this exhibit, because I guess Strawberry here, the zoo's lone individual, was somewhere behind the scenes even though it was clearly spring, and it should be noted that they are not true hibernators. From here, there's a slight bend in the path, but the trail will eventually take us to another wire-fronted aviary. Much like the former, this now sits empty, but I do know that it did once contain an American kestrel. But what's more interesting indeed is what sits behind it. Continuing on to our right, the brush opens up slightly, allowing us to view into the domain of the Mexican Grey Wolf sometimes known as the Lobo in Spanish. On this day, I saw three young females who arrived at the museum earlier this year from the Endangered Wolf Center in Missouri, at one point abundant in the mountainous, forested, and riparian environments of the southwestern United States. The Mexican Grey Wolf eventually became endangered in the mid-1900s due to hunting, trapping, and poisoning. After being listed under the Endangered Species Act in 1976, the remaining wild Mexican gray wolves were then captured by the United States in Mexico, from which a captive breeding program was initiated. Beginning in 1998, wolves were then released into certain protected regions of Arizona and New Mexico, and nowadays, there are just less than 300 wild Mexican gray wolves throughout the North American continent in the US and Mexico. While the museum has done their fair share of helping breed and release wolves in the past, I was also told by a keeper that they hope to continue this successful conservation program with these new females in the near future. Back into the woods we go until we eventually make our way to a clearing with a decent sized viewing shelter. To our left, tucked away in a corner, another aviary that was once home to a western screech owl, but front and center, a large forested exhibit that we've been circling nearly this entire time. Viewable not only from here, but behind both the black bears and the wolves. Formerly exhibiting white-tailed deer and wild turkeys, now signed was a mule deer, though there could still be a turkey in here somewhere. Anyways, the mule deer likely gets its name from their large ears, resembling those of a mule. And while they can range all the way from Idaho and Wyoming down to the southern Rockies, they are known for being the most abundant deer in the state of Arizona. And with that, the forest fades behind us as we make our way down out of the mountains and into the desert once more. I hope you enjoyed our trek through the woodlands and at least learned something about this fragile ecosystem along the way. Next you hear from me, we'll be staying right here in Arizona and continuing along this same path and lower in elevation to explore the semi-arid landscapes of the desert grassland. With that, thank you for watching, stay tuned, and I'll see you next time on the Virtual Zoo.